Hello, dear students. Welcome to our TV lesson. Hope you are okay and ready to learn. Let's start our lesson. Don't forget to take your notebook and a pen or a pencil to make notes. Now look at the screen. Here you can see five pictures of the capitals of different countries. Let's look at the pictures closer and try to guess the countries. Look at the picture. Can you guess the country? It's China. You are right. Next picture. What is this country? It's England. Correct. Picture number three. Of course, it's France. Picture number four. What is this country? It's America. Well done. And the last one? It's our Kazakhstan. Great! In today's lesson, we are going to talk about the architecture of different countries and how it has changed. As you can see, each country possesses its own specific architecture style that is based on its history and culture. Architecture plays an important role in the life of the country as it makes the country unique and different from others. For example, you can find Chinatown in America that is constructed according to all Chinese traditions. Now we are going to read a text about an English town in China. But before, let's look at some words that can be new to you. Firstly, try to match the words to the definitions yourself. Let's read the words. Resident Picturesque Skyscraper Outskirts Neighborhood Now let's read the definitions. Beautiful in an old-fashioned way. A very tall building. The areas of a town that are furthest from the center. One area of a town or a city. A person who lives somewhere permanently or on a long-term basis. Now you can start matching. Let's check your answers together. First, resident is a person who lives somewhere permanently or on a long-term basis. Picturesque means beautiful in an old-fashioned way. Skyscraper is a very tall building. Outskirts are the areas of a town that are furthest from the center. Neighborhood is one area of a town or a city. If you have four or five answers right, great job! If you have two or three answers correct, fine! Now you have some time to write the words that are new to you in your notebook. Let's start! A typical English town in Shanghai. Thames town looks a lot like a sleepy English town. The houses are built in English styles and the roads aren't wide highways but narrow streets. There are red telephone boxes, a church in front of a village green and a high street of small independent shops. But Thames town isn't in England. Instead, it is located more than 9,000 kilometers away on the outskirts of Shanghai in China near the rival city of Songjiang. And although the buildings may look old-fashioned, the whole town was only completed in 2006. Thames town was built as a way for Songjiang to attract people away from Shanghai. And it planned to do that by offering residents something very different. In Shanghai, you see apartment buildings next to car parks, 
shopping centers opposite skyscrapers, and motorways running between them all. None of that can be found in Thames Town. Instead, the town offers picturesque squares, a market, fountains and monuments, and tree-lined streets. Unfortunately, those features haven't been enough to tempt people out of Shanghai. The town is popular, but most of the people are visitors who come for the day or couples taking wedding photos. The town was designed for 10,000 people, but barely anyone lives there. So it has become a ghost town. Thames Town isn't the only project that has failed in Shanghai. There are other neighborhoods modeled on Swedish, German, Italian, Canadian and Spanish design. All of them are virtually empty. So perhaps there is more to a successful town than just architecture. Now let's do a task based on the text. Here you can see five sentences that you need mark true or false. Let's read the sentences together. Sentence number one. Thames Town is a copy of an English town. Next. The buildings in Thames Town are old. Number three. Thames Town looks very different to most different Chinese towns. Number four. Shanghai doesn't have a lot of modern buildings. And the last one. 10,000 people live in Thames Town. Now you can start matching. Let's check your answers. Sentence number one. Thames Town is a copy of an English town. This sentence is true. Number two, the buildings in Thames Town are old. This sentence is false. The buildings were built in 2006. Sentence number three, Thames Town looks very different to most different Chinese towns. This sentence is true. Shanghai doesn't have a lot of modern buildings. This sentence is definitely false. And the last one. 10,000 people live in Thames Town. This sentence is false. Barely anyone lives in Thames Town. If you have four or five sentences correct, great job. If you have two, three answers right, fine. Now we're going to read a short text about architecture of Kazakhstan. While reading, think if the architecture is similar in all the parts of the country. More or less identifiable reminders of the cities of the Great Silk Road have been preserved in many places in the south of Kazakhstan. In comparison with Europe, Kazakhstan has pretty little to offer in terms of architecture treasure. The Tom Mosque of Kozhakhmet Yesawi in Turkestan, dating from the times of the Timurids and now under the protection of UNESCO. Throughout the country, graveyards, mazari and mausoleums can be spotted, some of which have been skillfully sculpted in stones, whereas others consist of either raw or burnt clay tablets. In the cities of Kazakhstan, Buildings of more than a hundred years old have already been classified as historic. Prestigious Russian buildings from the 19th century can still be seen in Semei, Petropavl, Oral and some other cities, including a few Russian Orthodox churches. A few simple mosques have also been preserved. Fine examples of buildings put up during the earliest phase of socialist development can be seen most of all in Almaty, 
but also in formerly unlikely places such as Kızılorda. In Soviet classicist style, many universities, theaters and government accommodations were built. The way all Kazakh cities strike attention by their major blockwise socialist building booms can hardly escape any visitors. The only city being completed and modernized according to an overall master plan is Nursultan. The new capital is the very example to those who want to study modern Kazakh architecture. Government buildings feature much glass curved fronts and elements in omnipresent Kazakh sky blue. Often, domes imitate the roof of a yurt, such as those on the President's Cultural Center, the Congress Hall and the Palace of State Resids. There is also a revival of the Imperator style from the 50s, of which the new building of Kazmanai Gaz is an example. A carefree mix of all sorts of styles can be seen in residential buildings. As you can see, the architecture in different parts of the country is different. However, it contains the same elements. Even though the architecture tendencies changes with time and people start to use different materials, the concepts that represent the history and culture of the country remain the same. That is why the architecture of the country stays unique and recognizable. Now we are going to do a short listening task. You will hear a talk about the architecture of a concert hall. While listening, you will have to complete the notes with one word only for each answer. Remember that you will hear the recording twice. Let's start listening. We've been discussing the factors the architect has to consider when designing domestic buildings. I'm going to move on now to consider the design of public buildings. And I'll illustrate this by referring to the new Taylor Concert Hall that's recently been completed here in the city. So, as with a domestic building, when designing a public building, an architect needs to consider the function of the building. For example, is it to be used primarily for entertainment or for education or for administration? The second thing the architect needs to think about is the context of the building. This includes its physical location, obviously, but it also includes the social meaning of the building how it relates to the people it's built for. And finally, for important public buildings, the architect may also be looking for a central symbolic idea on which to base the design, a sort of metaphor for the building and the way in which it is used. Now, let's check the answers together. The designer of a public building may need to consider the buildings first, function, physical and social context, and symbolic meaning. If you got all answers right, great job! If you have two answers correct, well done! We've done a lot today. We've looked at the architecture of different countries, in Kazakhstan in particular. We've looked how it has changed. We've listened to a talk about the architecture of a concert hall and we've learned some new words. I would recommend you to revise them at home. This is the end of our lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your great work.